Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating game to show you this morning. Stockfish 10 playing against Leela ID 32591. This is from the Leela Chess Forums by Powell pa Powett. It's a tournament he did and he considers it a very strong net, looking very promising. The time control for this game is 10 minutes with a 10 second increment per move. So let's have a look what happens here. G3 from Stockfish. We go into an English opening, symmetrical. Bishop g7 here, knight c3, knight f6. Slightly unusual move from Stockfish now, bishop a3. It is a forcing move, but it leaves a piece loose, unprotected. In theory, according to chess based live book, bishop b2 seems to be the most popular move, and it looks very logical. Uh, the bishop is unprotected there, of course, though. Uh, but maybe black wants to play d6 anyway. And this kind of position has been seen quite a lot before. And it's thought to be a slight edge for white. So, okay, bishop a3. Is it such a big deal that the bishop's on a3 instead of b2? d6 is played. Knight f3. We have rook b8 here so this gets out of the way on this diagonal potentially that's useful is black going to play though for a6 and b5 white castles black castles d4 in fact now with d4 this knight is no longer protected by the pawn slight weakness in the last move and there's an echo of a pin after this move knight e8 pinning the pawn to c3 not such a big big deal in its own right after e3 we have bishop g4 pinning the knight against the queen and with actually a threat of taking and, and taking on d4 perhaps so knight e2 is played so just to illustrate if h3 for example black can take on f3 c takes and this should be absolutely great for black not too much controversy there so knight e2 we have now a very interesting move indeed a e5 and putting a lot of pressure on d4 so that central square under great scrutiny by Leela here we have the move d takes e5 being played on d takes c5 then bishop takes and actually black has e4 here and not what you might think actually not to take the rook but actually to play queen a5 and embarrass the bishop here black gets a big advantage with queen a5 so for example here then taking on a1 will pick up the bishop after if black had instead used e4 to win the exchange this is actually much better for white white well, has got a load of compensation here black's got dark square weaknesses that's um that's just very very good for white so we have actually d takes e5 and now queen a5 here which hits that bishop bishop b2 if the queen tries to protect with c1 queen c1 knight takes e5 is strong so hitting f3 if knight takes there's bishop takes e2 so this is quite nasty bishop takes e5 bishop takes a1 white's falling to bits here big advantage for black so uh, bishop b2 was played d takes and then the move bishop c3 perhaps expecting queen c7 which you know black is actually fine with queen c7 uh, and at least has equalized what else would there be to consider here after bishop c3 can you guess what Leela played if i give you five seconds to pause the video here black to play Okay. E4. Yeah, a queen sack. A queen sacrifice. We love a good queen sacrifice, don't we? Um, now, before we get into this, you might wonder, well, why even play bishop c3 before we get into this story here? What if queen c2? If queen c2, knight b4, black is actually in a really nice way here. For example, e4 here, rook d8, queen c7, and that nasty pin on the diagonal. 
uh, means actually black picking up the dark square bishop and knight c2 actually checkmates the queen as a cruel example. Uh, here on queen c2 again just to illustrate uh, this, this variation in particular. If uh, bishop takes e4 here then knight d6 and the bishop just drops back for knight c2 to be a huge threat. So for example knight f4 and in fact first queen d7 hitting the knight then kick the knight back then knight c2 and look at that bishop and knight winning that rook big advantage so bishop c3 and so this e4 is played offering the queen the queen is taken otherwise if knight d2 then bishop takes c3 thanks very much so the queen is taken we have one piece and also the threat of taking to to fork rook and queen so the rook moves to e1 so there's two choices there to take as well as this bishop we have actually f takes g2 being played here so interesting situation two pieces for the queen with this piece hanging can't really go to c3 because of that pin White plays rook c1, in fact, giving up the bishop. So just to put some things on the board, if bishop c3 would just simply take that because of the pin. If bishop d2, if the bishop tried to retreat, there's rook d8 here. And this is nasty, actually, because now there's a threat of bishop takes and rook takes d2. So, for example, queen c1, bishop takes a1. Yeah, it's picking up d2. It's pretty nasty. Otherwise, if the rook moved, there's horrible things here like knight e5 for knight f3 check, or rook takes the knight f3 check. It's just too nasty to bear this position. So uh, rook c1 just giving up the bishop basically. So it's three pieces for the queen. Is this necessarily terminal? Equal on pawns after taking there. Three, four, five, six, four. No. Black is a pawn down. Three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven. So three pieces of the queen, but white has the extra pawn. We have knight c6. So eyeing that central square again. Nice logical move, recentralizing. Now here, bishop f5 to provoke e4 to weaken d4. Where is the queen going otherwise? It's it's a compromising move, e4. If queen d1, <laughs> then rook d8 and black. Is winning another piece again if if the queen's have to, the queen has to be shielded then that's just horrible. So this is the lesser evil move e4. Bishop goes back to d7. We have rook cd1 and now that use of that d4 square knight d4 knight takes bishop takes d4. We have f3. Now knight g7. Black's pieces seem well coordinated here. B4 knight e6. F4. Yeah, if b takes c5 has been played, then bishop c6 is comfortable for black. Small edge, at least. So f4 is played. Rook fe8. And now here, white plays b5, which seems to release some tension in the position. If white plays f5, it's interesting to see the piece dynamics of taking here. Now check knight g5 is actually very good for black. After rook e2, bishop f3, for example, this position, knight e4, is really dangerous for white, as a key move here is rook e5. The idea of rook takes f5, and if g4, h5, and white's collapsing in this position, if h3 does knight g3 checkmate to show the peace coordination, beautiful peace coordination indeed, cutting all of the king escape squares. So let's have a look at this uh, f5 again, just out of interest though. Uh, on rook e2 here, if h4 had been played as an, an alternative knight f3, and now here this position, say takes rook e5 is again strong with the idea, you know, potentially of bishop e4 and rook takes f5. So say g4, rook e4, and then rook f4, and black's pieces are really well coordinated against white's king. This is actually winning for black. Uh, as an example, check and then check and then bishop b2. 
the queen uh, hasn't got too many uh, useful squares here and the black yeah black's attack is raging here so for example check as an example this position with knight c2 coming from knight b4 it's really embarrassing <clears throat> just winning lots of material uh, so it's it's very very unpleasant if f5 is played in a nutshell so it wasn't so b5 and we have black playing knight g7 now h3 and now h5 a4 we have rook e7 so black starting to pile the pressure on that central e4 square now queen d3 the rooks come in to hit e4 a5 now h4 fragmenting at the cost of another pawn but fragmenting white's pawn structure so two pawns now extra for white but the double pawns you'd think are not that significant here to be worried about this bigger fish to fry so to speak okay so if g4 had been played f5 anyway is strong this position as bishop takes f5 with that pin on e1 so for example here the coordination of pieces here is very nice after rook e3 knight h5 the coordination of the three pieces with great accuracy will win the queen in that example and instead of queen f5 if say f5 we can see the coordination working quite well here winning the queen so uh, g takes h4 is played we have b6 so keeping the option for this bishop to reroute on this diagonal to hit e4 you'll notice in this game this huge focus on central squares by Leela throughout a lot of her moves seem to be geared towards the central squares so bishop c c8 to reroute to hit e4 now white desperately sacks the exchange here with bishop b7 this is going to be formidable if that center pawns tighten out then there's things like knight f5 and all the black's pieces are springing to life king g7 rook h8 it's it's going to be murderous basically so this is tried to get rid of black's bishop pair now queen d3 but now in fact rook d7 here is played king g1 bishop b7 e5 and black does play f5 here now not not knight f5 but f5 interesting you might think so the pawn uh, can't take really on because the rook takes e1 that's just uh hopeless there's bishop e4 to stop any nonsense with queen takes g6 and here this is this is winning there's no queen a because the bishop takes a8 so it's winning for black so f5 we have queen g3 bishop e4 rook d1 is played if queen takes g6 d3 and here rook e6 d2 this pawn's really strong bishop c2 the pawn's too strong winning for black so rook d1 is played we have d3 anyway queen f2 rook b8 h5 pretty desperate g takes king f1 king h7 rook d2 rook c7 and now there's a focus on c4 so queen d4 the rooks double white's pretty helpless here queen takes b6 rook takes c4 queen a5 rook a8 supported by the bishop and here uh in fact because of issues like rook a1 and rook c2 check white gives up the queen sees that as the best move it's pretty desperate here uh so there are there are some legal moves like b6 and c7 you might spot here yeah it just looks really nasty after check and then rook c um, no we can take the queen on b6 sorry there's only one move to consider there check and something like rook c2 is queening this this is just queening that pawn and if king e3 then we just play rook e1 check as an example so it's pretty hopeless for this last uh desperate looking move queen takes a8 is played leaving black two pieces up not much to say about the final position it's very easy with two extra pieces so uh we saw in this game a fascinating uh subtle tactical issues seemingly building up a slightly more loose piece on a3 perhaps 
in terms of being able to exploit that loose piece with queen a5 as opposed to the more theoretical bishop b2 was the first sort of micro tactical concern the second micro tactical concern or positional you could argue with the central squares being really focused on particularly d4 was this bishop g4 so creating another pin in the position uh, so as well as this pin on this diagonal so like three sort of micro tactical issues coming together positionally as well for the stakes you know central control so bishop c3 perhaps expected the queen to retreat when the queen was sacrificed for three pieces white did have an extra pawn black then sacrificed another pawn to really fragment white's pawns and it seemed that white's center was basically collapsing uh, with the e4 build up leading white to sacrifice the exchange and then actually that pawn was really dangerous in its own right later winning eventually uh, so a fascinating game indeed if you enjoyed this game video uh, please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net play against other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis in these of these games from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much.